Welcome back to the mining channel. On today's episode, we'll be building a mini trommel. This mini trommel will be towable with a pickup truck or a side-by-side. -side. I'll use this thing to go around and poke holes within my permitted site and just test it before I bring in any bigger trommel. If you've watched my channel before, you should know how I start one of these, with a drawing. This particular scale, for every one inch that we drew out, actually equals six inches. So two inches equals one foot. This makes it super easy to measure everything out and copy the design straight from the paper. Also, same thing as the big trommel, we can take our angles and transfer it to our steel for easy cutting. In typical Tyler fashion, we'll be building the majority of this trommel with scrap steel. I already went ahead and built the main frame for the unit. This axle was actually from the light plant and same with the hitch unit. Might as well use these up instead of them sitting around. I started off by doing my length, width, and diagonal measurements to square everything up. I also have everything cut to length, so this frame will go together quick. Let me throw you on time lapse and let's get this frame tack together. All right, there's our main frame. It's about 50% welded together. It'll have a fairly large hopper for a small trommel. That's four feet by four feet. That'll give plenty of room for a mini excavator to feed it. This back bar will keep off for now so I can work on the barrel. These rollers are already mounted and lined up. They're just tacked into place right now until we get the final fitment of the barrel. To line these rollers up, I already knew my distance between centers. Also, I just took a square edge, and made sure it was touching there, and there on both corners. I also took a straight edge and made sure that those were touching there and there. Also on the other side. Before we put the barrel on, I just wanted to give you some information on these rollers. These are only for mock-up. Typically, I like to use the ones with a plastic coating. During a run, if a rock gets in between this and the barrel, these will actually crack. Whenever I get a chance to run up north again, I'll replace these with the plastic coating ones. And two more things. The way I have this design is there's supposed to be a chute right here for the sluice. This bolt is actually put in backwards, so I need to undo this and slide it in this way with the nut on that side. Then finally, make sure that your greaser, AKA grease fitting, AKA grease nipple, AKA alamite fitting, is pointing somewhere that you have easy access to. If that Zerk was actually pointing this way, that chute's in the way, you could not grease it. This is the barrel that we'll be using for the scrub section. It's 20 inches in diameter and an eighth of an inch thick. This is an old propane tank. I warn you though, do not cut these. It is super dangerous. I've done it lots, but I have a method. I will not tell you how to do this. I'm very surprised on how round this barrel is and the transition between the seam. Lots of times you end up with a flat spot here, but this one actually doesn't have that. Okay, so I went ahead and did two tedious things and I did not film it. First off is the screen section. I ended up changing it from my original drawing. I originally had two feet of this half inch punch plate and then into the nugget side. Turns out that I didn't have the amount of punch plate that I needed, so I just went with one foot. On the nugget side, this is also a one foot with one inch holes. If you're one millimeter off on these sections, it'll actually end up tilting the barrel and you'll end up with an oblong screen section. So take your time when you do these punch plate pieces and it'll work out perfect. One way to test is put it straight along this edge and make sure it touches in three points all along. One, two, three. And do all four corners. The easiest way to do these screen sections is find a barrel the entire length that you're looking for and then cut windows out and add your screens in from the back side. This way you know that barrel is perfectly straight and you don't have to do all that pissing around like I did. Just like I mentioned in the big trommel build, punch plate is meant to go a certain way. You can see these holes are tapered. The smallest part of the taper is on the inside of the barrel and the larger part of the taper is on the outside. That prevents rocks from getting stuck inside of the punch plate. Another thing that I forgot to mention when I put these crossbars in is these are actually an angle at the same angle that the barrel is at. If they were flat, you'd end up with a lot of wear on the one side of the roller and you'd go through a lot of bearings. On this side, the engine actually sits flat both ways. Now the finicky part is to get these two lined together. Here I have a spider gear. These are only rated for like two or three horsepower, so it'll be perfect for this size of trommel. 
These spider gears do allow for a small amount of misalignment, but if you get them perfect, the rubber in them will actually last a long time. So what you could do is shim your engine up or down or your Radicon up or down. Take your time aligning these and you'll have no problems in the future. When you have proper alignment, you should feel no vibration. If there is a small amount of binding in the coupler, this engine will vibrate a little bit. To drive the barrel, this is a 60 to one Radicon. We should end up with about eight RPM in the total barrel spin. This is the number 50 sprocket on a weld on hub. These can be changed out if the speed isn't good enough. For the barrel sprocket, I'll show you a cheap method. This is cut up from a bunch of smaller sprockets and we'll weld these on. All these pieces cut from a 15 tooth sprocket cost me about $30. Compared to if I went and got one plasma cut, it costs about $600. But what happens when you go cheap on things usually is there's troubles behind it. These can be super finicky and I'll show you how to do these. So what happens if you just start laying these links out and tacking them on? By the time your chain rolls around from the drive on the Radicon to this point, it'll actually misalign and the chain will either not rest on there or it'll jump off. We have our line marked out so we know where to put the sprocket this way. For each distance in between the links, you put your sprocket in there and that's where you're gonna wanna weld it. The height of the sprocket will actually dictate on where these links line up. So what I did is I started off with one tacked into place. Now what we have to do is put our small pieces of sprockets under the chain all the way around and we'll see if these pins line up. This pin is located here and the next pin is located there. So what we have to do is actually go around and shim these sprockets up slightly. So it pulls that link to that point. Okay, we have all our little sprocket segments shimmed up. Shimming those sprockets upward just created a larger circumference for the chain to line up for the perfect pin length. You can see my mark in there for the center of the chain. Now we can go along and tack each segment onto the barrel. With the segments tacked in and the chain off, now I could do a full weld all the way around these segments. I don't recommend doing this with a large trommel. There are manufacturers out there that do this, but it is sort of unreliable and the chain can pop off every once in a while. One last part of the chain system is to get rid of the slack. I just built a tensioner here. This is just the idler sprocket with the bearing in it so it can spin freely. And then just needs a spring from there down to the bottom. So now let's put some of these stopper rings inside of the barrel. So we'll be installing three sets of these rings. The first set will prevent water from rushing from the hopper onto the screens and out the back of the barrel. The second set will divide the two classifying screens and then the last set will prevent any material from rushing over the one inch screen and out the tailing chute. One thing with these scrubber rings is you don't want to go too tall. What happens is it'll actually build up material in the scrubber section and travel up the barrel and puke out the small slit between the hopper and the barrel itself. With these three rings installed, material and water will come down the hopper, come to a halt right there, get a nice little scrub in the half inch section, come to the one inch section, get a nice little scrub also, and we won't have any water rushing down the barrel and out the back tailing chute. Now we can come to this side and install our small flippers. We don't want to go too tall, we're not trying to beat the crap over the rocks. Just enough to make a slurry with the water and material and break up clays. A small trauma like this would never ever break up clays 100%. This is only for testing. So with the dry system all done, before we go and fire this up, there's one last piece that we have to build. We'll be building a two-in-one end cap. So this will prevent any material from coming this way and we'll also add a couple inches on the side for our thrust wheels. This is our end cap here. It's built from 3 8 plate. Gotta make sure these things are perfectly flat so it doesn't track the barrel up and down. If you only have one person kicking around while well, one holds it in place while the other measures and welds it, I have an easier way. You just measure on the inside of the barrel. This one is 19 inches. So you make a mark at 19 inches on each side. 
drill a hole and then send a bolt through it. What these do is when you go to put the plate on, they'll actually rest on this edge and center itself. With our end cap tacked in, we can now install our thrust wheels. I'll be installing one thrust wheel at the very top to prevent the barrel from walking up. That does occur if your rollers are misaligned. These aren't adjustable like the big trommel, so I'll add this anyways. Then on the bottom here, we'll install one on this side. This will prevent the barrel from wanting to walk downwards. This is what I've whipped up here. We'll be using these big bearings. I had a bunch of these things, so I just want to use them up. That just threads on and holds the bearing in place. So this thrust wheel will be welded to this cross beam. We just slide it into place, line the bearing up and make sure that there's no gap in between the top of the bearing and the bottom of the bearing. Remember this bracket is at an angle at the same angle as the trommel. So this should be square. And also the center of the barrel should line up with the center of that bearing. And then for the top one, I also made another collar on the lathe. This can be welded. This is flat, so what we have to do is actually angle this to the angle of the barrel. And then what we'll do is just keep these tacked on, run the trommel, make sure all the tolerances are good, and then we'll weld them up fully. With the drive assembly all done, we're gonna jump onto this hopper. I built a transition ring to go from the hopper to the barrel. We just need to tack this into place so we can start measuring out the hopper. Let's cut up some tabs. We'll tack these on and remove them later on. We have the bottom all marked out. We'll be using a one inch steel plate. We'll cut it out with a plasma cutter, make it quick. To set this bottom end, I just tacked some tabs onto the bottom so it doesn't fall through. Also tacked this piece to the barrel so it can just rest on there. To make these end pieces, I use my CAD program, Cardboard Aided Design. Just trace out the edges and we can cut that out of sheet metal now. So that's literally it for the hopper. I just plasma cut these holes in it. We still have to build the nozzles. That'll be the last thing that we do on this. To finalize this area, I think I'm actually gonna build a small guard. It kicks up and over. Sometimes material on the back of your bucket will trickle onto the trommel and end up on the rollers. To start this up, we'll run a perimeter around it with one and a half inch square tubing. Okay, the hopper's all done. Let's head to the back. For the rear catch basin, I'm gonna do it slightly different than that three foot trommel that I just built. The three foot trommel basin comes down and then it drops down into the sluice. I don't have a whole lot of room right here, so I'm gonna make this just one piece and then glide out. So I'll start up fairly high, roll it around, and then it'll discharge into the sluice box. So we'll start on the top here. This is the piece where the basin will bolt onto. This actually has to be leveled to the ground so the sluice ends up being level. Okay, we have the back side of our flume all bent up. I just put this in the brake and put a small bend every two inches. We have three pieces here. One is the end cap, one is the splitter between the two screens, and then this is the cap for the beginning of the screens. Okay, we have a couple more pieces of the flume cut up. Let's get these in place. And then the very back piece. This is just a 16 gauge sheet metal. Don't have to go overly thick. It's not a production trommel. Okay, there we have it. The catch basin is all tacked together. For the main sluice box, we need to divide this into two sections because of the two screen sections. So the fine gold side will actually be 18 inches wide. What this will let us do is actually take the gold hog mats out from the three foot diameter trommel and put them in this for our prospecting. On the nugget side, it actually tapers inward to 10 inches. We'll just run an expanded over moss on this side. Just super easy. They are nuggets, so you'll just be able to pick them out. For the bottom part of the sluice box, we'll also hinge it. I want to be able to fold this up during transportation and not have to piss around with sluice boxes. All right, let's put this bottom sluice box on now. Also, this bottom hinge, we'll use that automotive urethane and seal it up. That stuff can flex whichever way it wants and it won't break its seal. With the flume having a sit level, you can adjust the angle of your barrel. Sometimes when you want to run more yarded, you just simply tilt the barrel, but we can't do that.
With the box all stiffened up with the one and a half inch, I'll show you what we have going on inside. We have all the mats mounted. On this side, it's a four pound expanded over top of a conveyor matting. On this side, I just robbed the gold hog matting from the big trommel and bolted it in place. All these fasteners are welded from the backside so we don't have to worry about them falling through. One last thing that we have to do is build our curtain. I'll do that later on though. So now let's get this sluice box mounted. I'll be doing a two in one hanging system and also to keep the sluice box from falling during transport. It's pretty cool, eh? You can actually fold this box up without having to remove all the matting. So these are the tabs. We'll weld one to the sluice box and one to the frame of the trommel. During transport, I'll just bolt this so the sluice box doesn't bounce around. So we'll just be using some chain and some clevises and then we'll go from there up to those. Okay, let's get on to the spray bars. I built this little piece with a cam lock and the spray bar for the barrel. This we have to weld on right there. I'm actually gonna weld it on from the inside because the cam lock is actually right in the way from being able to seal this up. And then this is the spray bar for the inside of the barrel. These are just one and a half inch square piping, holes blasted in that. So what I'm gonna do, cam lock this on, get it in the right position and then weld this up. and then we'll cap off this end. Having these spray bars on a cam lock works super well. Just a couple of degrees off from your material and you could not be spraying all the gold into the screen section. So having it adjustable is a must. And up in the hopper here, we have four more one and a half inch outputs. These just go straight, spray up into the barrel and then these are just at a slight word down angle to get material washed right here into the barrel. So this is an integrated water system also, just like the other trauma. So as the water goes in, there's a hole in behind here. That water will flow down to the back spray bar system. Then for the hopper, the water goes up through this and then into the top spray bar system. For the inlet for the water, I have a two inch and a three inch. I'm really hoping that a two inch will run the sluice, but just in case, I will have a three inch that's just gonna be capped off. And also, I have inlets on both sides of the trauma. That's just because the guy doesn't know which side the water is going to be inputted on. The creek or ponds could be on this side or on that side. And then whatever side you don't use, just plug it up. Good to go. For the tailing chute, I just whipped up a little curve. It's a little bit tricky going from something round to flat, but now we need to create a chute to get rid of the coarse tailings away from the trommel. Here's our chute that we whipped up. I'm slowly running onto sheet metal, so I'm starting to scrounge a little bit, making a note of multiple pieces. I built a piece for this corner. As the tailings come up and over the barrel, we don't want them to fall on this side. We want them to go that way. And then one more filler piece right here. This piece is just tacked onto the flume. Now we need to cut this off and make a mount for the bottom so this is removable. The hitch is located right there, and this thing would not be toolable. Use some one and a half inch to slide in there and we'll pin this into place. So the coarse tailing chute just slides into the square bar. And then a pin to hold it into place. And then during transportation, the setter there. So there's the coarse tailing chute. There's one last thing that I wanna build for this and I wanna build a picker system. So we need to make a bracket that goes up and over where we can grab it with an excavator, and move it around. Okay, we pulled the little trommel outside now we have to build some brackets going up and a bar going across. I don't know exactly where the center of gravity on this is, so we'll tack weld it, lift it up with the excavator, see where it's sitting. Okay, then we have our pick point. We'll tack this in place. I have a feeling that we're gonna have to kick it over to one side just due to the weight of the sluice box and the engine on one side. I weld this bar to here solid, and then I'll only do a one inch stitch on these. Just in case we do have to shift it forwards or backwards, it'll be easy to cut. Okay, I'm happy with that. It sits level this way and that way. It'll be nice for checking through the bush with the excavator. Won't have to worry about tilting. I hope that bracket holds up in the bush, swing it around. I wonder if there's a way to test it. Okay, yeah, she holds. So that's pretty much it for this trommel. I don't think I'm gonna paint it right now. So yeah, we just don't have time right now. We have to get set up out at the mine site. I don't have much time left to get everything ready. The weather's getting really good out right now, so we have to get sluicing. Yeah, of course I painted it.
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Mini Trommel Build. We'll be using this unit at three different sites for our prospecting. These little units are very cheap to build for yourself. I have under $1,000 into this little guy. I'll give out all the angles, measurements, and specs once I test this guy out. The next episode in two weeks, I should finally be out at the mine site. There's still lots of snow out there, but that's not going to stop me. Anyways, I hope to see you on the next one.